Okay, so uh, I've allowed this to dry and I've gotten the supplies to paint it. I actually only changed shirts, it's still the same day. So the first test for grease is just to run your finger along it and if you don't get anything on your fingers, that means you've gotten all the grease and dirt and oil that you're gonna get off of it off. So I'm using Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. And, um, you know, there's nothing magical about it. I just happen to like it. Brown is really easy to cover with black. That's the color I'm painting. If I was going with a different color, I probably would use a different color primer. It also comes in gray and white. And um, the white typically takes two coats. We'll see if we need one or two coats of this. Now, I like to use metal paint trays. However, um, they're like three and a half dollars a piece. So what I do is I buy disposable plastic tray liners. We'll just toss that down there. And they just drop into here. And there's a couple of nice things about tray liners. One is they clean up really easy. Um, two, they, they cost less than a dollar. And three, they are marked for recycling. They're, they're type one plastic in this case. So, you know, I just drop them in a recycle bin. I don't know if City likes them or not, but um, you know, I feel good about it. So I'm using a Wooster brand um, paint roller, and then I use these small four and a half inch rollers. Um, they also make this in a six inch roller. And uh, there's a couple of reasons I like this particular product and that I recommend it. Uh, first, it's made in the United States. So many things are not made in the US anymore, and I really like to support my local economy. Now, for my viewers who are in Canada and Europe and um, Mexico, I encourage you to buy things that are made locally there. It's good for the environment. It's good for your economy. Um, so I'm in the United States, so I try to buy U.S. made products when I can find them. Um, this is also a really high quality product. And um, one of the other advantages is it's a small roller, so it doesn't suck up that much paint. If you're using this giant eight inch roller that's you know three inches around, it sucks up a lot of paint and you waste it and all the paint is now you know, $25, $35 a gallon. So, you know, the advantage of this is you just don't waste that much. And I don't have that much to paint, so it's not gonna take long and I'm gonna end up throwing this thing away. These rollers are about two something a piece. Um, they are expensive, but you do get what you pay for. And, you know, let's face it, you know, the, the additional cost is well worth it in my opinion because I'm supporting a local or a regionally owned business. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some of this paint in here and then I'm gonna roll it on and give this thing one, maybe two coats. So I always put my paint tray on the floor because otherwise it, it gets on the floor on its own. And uh, I'm gonna shake this up again. Nothing magical there. They make a special opener. Um, I own a couple of them. I have no idea where they're at. So I'm just using a flat bladed screwdriver. It will get the job done. Go around this a couple times. show you a trick for putting the lid back on. I never put paint back in the can. It's just a personal preference for me. So take a paper towel and place it over the lid before you close it. So um, it's also important that you use the right type of hammer. And I had to go get this. This is a rubber mallet. Um, you can also use a small dead blow hammer. Um, do not use a three pound baby sledge or a regular framing hammer. You'll dent the hell out of the can and then it's not gonna seal right the next time you open it and try to close it. So, you know, right tool for the right job when possible. And just give it a few light wax. And wipe this up. I probably should have put gloves on, but you know, it is what it is. Okay. 
Now, if I was doing this outside, I would very likely spray this. Um, just because it's quick and it's efficient and I get, a good, I get paint everywhere I need it. In a lot of places I don't. But I'm not working outside and that's why I'm not spraying. Now, if you do spray this, um, it is a solvent-based paint, so I find that cutting it about 10 to 15 percent with straight acetone and then stirring it is enough to get it to be thin enough to spray without problems. Your mileage may vary. So at this point, uh, the primer coat is on, looks great. Um, it's only going to need one coat of primer. Um, using a quality roller, it put a great coat of paint on here, it's very even. Um, I will probably, now I'll touch up with a brush. Um, you know, the ends are open and, and I can't really get in there with a roller, so I didn't. Um, but the next step is, I'll give this about an hour and a half to dry and then I will, um, you know, come back with a, uh, flat black and start putting a final coat on it. Okay, hi. Um, so at this point I've put, this, sec this is the second coat of the flat black and I'm still using my Wooster roller and my disposable tray. I'm actually done painting but I wanted to show what this looks like painted. Um, it looks fantastic once it's dried so the next step is to go ahead and treat this wall with the waterproofing paint and to slide this into position and then we'll anchor it in place and um, it's, it's coming together. So and then once the once this has been put in place I'll actually install a one and an eighth inch thick plywood top on here but we're not ready for that today so um, at this point we just need to let the paint dry and then tomorrow it can be moved into place.